In the last video we introduced the concept of partial derivatives. In this video we're going to talk about second order partial derivatives. What are second order partial derivatives? Well a second order derivative is really doing the derivative of a derivative. So let's introduce the notation for this and just jump into some examples. So for a function z is equal to f of x and y, meaning z is a function of both x and y, we would have the notation di squared z by di x squared, or alternatively di squared f by di x squared, or f sub double x. All of these are interchangeable notations that really mean that we do a first derivative with respect to x, and then we take the derivative a second time with respect to x, meaning we do the derivative with respect to x two times. Similarly, we might have the notation di squared z by di y squared, di squared f by di y squared, or f sub double y, all of these again being interchangeable notations. This time it would mean that we first take the derivative of z with respect to y, and then we take the derivative a second time with respect to y. Now we don't always have to take the derivative with respect to the same variable both times. Sometimes what we do is we first take the derivative with respect to x, and then we take the derivative of that with respect to y, the other variable. In this case, the notation would be di squared z, because we're doing z twice, but by di y di x, di y di x, or y x. So that would mean that we take the first derivative with respect to x and the second derivative with respect to y. If we were to reverse this process and take the derivative with respect to y first and then with respect to x, we would interchange this notation so it would be di x by di y in the denominator here or x y in the subscript over here. So that's the notation we're going to be using. Let's do a few of these derivatives to illustrate how this is applied. So here I have the function f of x, y is equal to 3 halves x squared plus y squared minus 7x minus 4y minus 2xy plus 132. I'm ultimately going to be getting the second order derivatives, but before I can get the second order derivatives, I need the first order derivatives. So that's our part A here. We're going to get the first order derivatives. So our first order derivative with respect to x is going to mean that my x terms here are going to be considered the variable of interest and my y's are going to be treated like constants. So the derivative of my first term here would be 3 halves times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. The derivative of my second term here, y squared, well y is going to be treated like a constant. The derivative of a constant is 0. My third term, negative 7x, is going to be negative 7 times the derivative of x is 1. My fourth term, negative 4y, well, y is going to be treated like a constant again, so the derivative of a constant would be 0. My fifth term, negative 2xy, well, negative 2 and y are constant, or in this case, coefficients to x, and then the derivative of x would be 1. And then we have 132, the derivative for which is 0. Simplifying this, my 2's cancel each other out so that I have 3x minus 7 minus 2y. So that's my derivative of f with respect to x. Now let's do the derivative of f with respect to y. So when I'm doing the derivative with respect to y, my y terms are changing and my x's are going to be treated as constants. So for the first term here, 3 halves x squared, we would treat it like a constant. The derivative of a constant is 0. For my second term here, y squared, the derivative with respect to y would become 2y. For my third term, negative 7x, x would be treated like a constant, so the derivative of a constant would be 0. For my fourth term, negative 4y, I would have negative 4 times the derivative of y, which is 1. For my fifth term, negative 2xy, negative 2 and x would be treated as coefficients to y. And then the derivative of y would be 1. And then the derivative of 132 would be 0. Simplifying this expression, I get 2y minus 4 minus 2x. So now I have my first order derivatives. 
Now that I have my first order derivatives, I'm going to try to find my second order derivatives. Now let's start with the second order derivative xx. So this is going to be the derivative with respect to x of my derivative fx or 3x minus 2y minus 7. So the derivative with respect to x here, it's the only term with x in it, is going to be 3 and the derivative for these other terms would be zero. Now let's do the second order derivative fyy. Now this would be the derivative with respect to y of our first order derivative with respect to y, negative 2x plus 2y minus four. Now in this function, I've only got one y term here, and the derivative of that with respect to y would be two. Now let's do our second order derivative fyx. This would be the derivative with respect to y of our first order derivative with respect to x, 3x minus 2y minus 7. Let's remember this is with respect to y, so I'm looking at my y terms only. The derivative with respect to y would be negative 2. Now finally, I've got my derivative fxy. This is the derivative with respect to x of my first order derivative with respect to y, negative 2x plus 2y minus 4. Now this is the derivative with respect to x, so I'm only going to have this x term to consider when I do the derivative. So this is also going to be negative 2. So I have fxx is equal to 3, fyy is equal to 2, and what's interesting is that fyx is equal to fxy is equal to negative 2. That our two derivatives here have the same value. Now this relationship that fyx was equal to fxy was not just coincidence. This is going to be the case all the time. The second order derivative of a function with respect to both y and x are going to be the same regardless of the order in which you do the derivatives. So whenever you're doing the second order derivative yx, it'll be the same as your second order derivative xy. So you need only do them once. So that's it for second order partial derivatives. Let's have you try doing this in the next knowledge check.